Hello everybody, welcome to Chess24 and welcome to another, well, session, let's call it, of the Tactics Trainer where I am going to uh, try and solve some tactical puzzles, positions and the reason why here at Chess24 we've decided to uh, morph this into a live event is because everybody who's watching can also learn um, how uh, an international master or uh, you know, a, a relatively competent player, I'll, I use that term very sparingly, uh, evaluates positions, looks at positions and tries to find tactics. And what it's all to do with is pattern recognition. And tactics are just, um, the reason why you spot tactics quickly is because you've seen the pattern previously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and explain what patterns I see in certain positions um, and yeah, and go through a number of these. Remember, you can talk to me in the in the chat box. I'm uh, have, have have a laugh because there's going to be a lot of very simple positions that I get wrong. Let's have a bit of fun. See what happens. It's a glorious Friday afternoon here in Hamburg. Um, so yeah, we should just uh, take the glorious feeling and vibe outside into my session. So let's go. Here we go. Uh, white to move. Um, I can see there are lots of knight jumps here, knight into e6. I can also see, of course, a takes b6 is in the end. The pawn is on pre at the end. Uh, also, I can see the move a6 might be very strong, followed by knight c6. That might be it. So yeah, so here in the, the position, I'm looking at all the knight jumps. I think this is the move, and knight c6 should win. All right, not too difficult. Let's try and get the rest of these. White to move. What have we got? Well, clearly black's threatening a lot of things. Queen a2 is mate, so we have to deal with that immediately. Um, we have got a lot of checks with white. We've got a rook on f8 with check but that can be blocked by bishop c8, but now I think I can see the idea of this problem is after rook f8, you can't go king a7 because of rook a8 check, king b6, and then queen d6 should be winning. So you have to go bishop c8, after which we can take that off, use the fact that the rook is pinned, king takes c8, queen h8, king to d7. Now, let's stop there. Ah, and then we might be able to just zigzag with the queen, Queen g7 check, and if king d6, queen f6, king d7, and we need a special move, queen f7, king d6, mm, and I can't see one there. So check here, takes, takes, mm, here, here. Even this isn't totally straightforward. Um, I'm, I, I feel like this check must be right, yeah. Right, so if that's right, then this must be correct. Right, so we could, and we can't play queen, so this has to be correct, king d7. So maybe taking on h7, where is the tactic here? Taking on h7, it feels like queen g7 should be correct. Yeah, and the point was that after king d6, I think the puzzle should be ended there, but I think there's a win. I spent too long, so I actually lost rating points. Okay, what's going on here? Bishop d6. Um, immediately I can see the motif, and that is to deliver checkmate on d8. I can see that rook down to d8 is mate, so we just have to eliminate these defenders. Probably just the move knight takes e5. And after takes, queen takes e5, bishop takes e5, rook d8 would have been mate. All right. Uh, here again, it's a mating construction. Queen c1, so clearly black wants to exchange queens here. Um, and this is slightly tricky because there's no quick quick fix here. Um, I wanted to play an absolutely extraordinary move that doesn't seem to work. So how do we... Ah, I've seen it, of course. Deflection technique. The queen is protected by the rook. The correct move is rook g8, because you can't play rook takes, queen takes c1. If it's king g8, then it vacates the g3 square for check, and we want to give mate. And, okay, well this way we win the queen and it's winning. All right. Uh, white to play. Now this is interesting, because you could theoretically get this in a game. Rook uh, versus rook and knight, which is a theoretical draw, but 
um, you know, uh, this position seems like it's winning. So the question is, why is this position winning? Um, somehow we want to... Now, somehow a move like rook e8. No, that doesn't work. And if we give a check... Ah, of course, it's just check, because the king has to go to a, a square, and then we can give a knight check and we win. So something like this and check, and uh, we win the rook. So that wasn't too tricky. White's move. Again, black is threatening a lot of things. I can immediately see the answer. This is a very cute um, little... And again, it's just a pattern. The idea here is that we want to take advantage of this long diagonal. Um, so the beautiful way we do this is we actually take the pawn off with, with the queen, sacrifice the whole queen, and then give a discovered check. So king g8 is the only move, and then knight takes h6. And it's really this position here, with the knight takes h6, is the key one. Imagine a lot of the time there isn't a bishop on f5, more often than not there's a pawn on h7. And this configuration with rook on f8, king on g8, pawn on h7, knight on h6, and bishop on b2, you get this in a lot of games, so bear that uh, queen uh, sacrifice in mind. Again, just pattern recognition, nothing more. Here I can immediately see the answer, it's very simple. I can see a knight on g5 is check, so rook takes e6 is correct, followed by knight g5 check, and uh, we'll checkmate black, so that was pretty simple. Uh, here again, the solution is very simple. I can see the queen is undefended and there's a discovered attack, so just this move, followed by takes, wins the queen. That was rather easy. Let's continue. Again, I've seen this idea before. Can't remember exactly where, but there's a beautiful smothered mate idea here. Black has just played knight e8 to stop queen f7 mate. It does it, but we can do it anyway, because after queen f7, knight takes f7, now knight e6. That's actually an absolutely stunning uh, checkmate. We're using the two knights and the two knights which are um, uh, taking black's escape squares away with the king. So, this is a very famous example here. I've seen this dozens of times, saw this when I was a junior. Um, White has just played the absolutely audacious queen d8 check after king takes d8. And now, clearly, what we have to do is we have to find a double check with the bishop. And the way you do it is you go to g5, bishop to g5 check. If king e8, rook d8 was mate, but king c7, another very classy looking mate, just bishop to d8, beautiful geometry. Uh, which is winning. So that was very easy. This one I've already seen as well. Once more, the first thing I notice in this position is back rank weakness with black and the symbol motif is you can take on f7. Because after rook takes, I can see the rook comes down and whichever, wh however, uh, rook, after rook of eight, you can take with any rook and it's checkmate. So that's very easy. Here as well is a motif I've seen many, many times. Um, the bishop is x-raying the queen on a5, um, and uh, um, we just and there's also this idea of bishop takes f7 check in a lot of positions. So, uh, the, I think the correct move though, and another idea is that this queen, now that it's pinning this king, this d6 square is always one that is very weak. And as a result, we would love to put a knight in on d6. So I think the right move is knight to b5. And after queen d8, knight d6 is actually checkmate. Very, very simple stuff. All right, uh, knight f5, white to move. Again, I can immediately see what's happening here. It's all to do with the awkward placement of this queen. And uh, after bishop g5, I think we win the queen by force. There, there, and knight f4 at the end. So here, here, and knight f4, quite simply winning the queen. And if queen f3, knight g6 is mate. So this is all simple. Again, this is a very simple one <clears throat> where the, a very important pattern here, very important position, where you're always looking at the move bishop takes h7 check. You would love to just go queen h5 and queen takes h7, but you notice that f5 is in the air. So what do you do? Well, of course, you just whip this guy off. Oh, no, you don't. You don't whip this. Ah, there was another way, queen g4 and queen h4. Okay, so um, this is actually, sorry, queen g4 check, 
king h8 and queen h4. The point is that now f5 is not impossible because the queen's pinned. So it's maybe bishop takes h7 check um, one anyway because I wanted to spend a couple of 10b with a rook lift, but maybe it was a bit too slow. Not quite sure, but there you go. All right. Um, this one is... Um, Fairly simple, yeah, I've got it. Basically, the idea is that you want to win the queen, so the first move that comes to mind is queen h1, then you see king g4, and you think, okay, I'd love to distract the king's uh, protection of the queen via f5, but king takes g5 is good. So you come another way, you play queen d1, you realize that the king can't come back, so you have to block with the knight, and then you realize, actually, this king is in a self-mate, and queen d7 is mate. So this is, um, this is a nice little... Uh, I, uh, idea where the, 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 your own pieces are blocking your escape square, so that's that's very cute. Um, this one here, uh, again, is very uh, simple, um, where clearly black is trying to promote his pawns. You want to go e2 followed by rook f1, but the move you have to see is that after e2, bishop takes f2, you've got a sneaky little move, bishop e3, where you're threatening to queen the pawn and take the bishop back, and that just uh, wins the game immediately. So let's keep on going. Rook f1 is in the air. Again, pretty simple tactic. Bishop h3 check, just deflecting defense of that rook wins on the spot. So that's not too much to, um, to talk about. Let's continue. Um, in this position, uh, again, it's a pretty simple tactic. I've noticed that the rook is x-raying this queen, but bishop takes bishop doesn't actually win the queen, but there's a gorgeous move. We'd love to play bishop d5 check. How do we play bishop d5 check? We can do it with the queen. Queen d5 takes, and after king h8, I'm not sure whether we want to flick this in, probably just take the queen off, and we're a piece up and with a winning position. So that was pretty simple. Let's keep on going. Knight d5 is checked. Now this is, uh, clearly, it's, it's actually a very easy one, because king g8 loses to queen g7, mate. F6 loses, E5 loses because the queen is on pre, so there's really only one move, and that is to uh, to play the move knight D4 check. And after king D1, queen C2, and it's actually black that very surprisingly gives mate in that position. Knight D4 was a double check, that's why that position worked. All right, uh, king D1, oh my goodness, rook takes F1 looks like made in one to me, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, we'll just uh, dismiss that one, that was... Uh, Bit much. By the way, I should point out that um, uh, a lot of changes have been made with the tactics training. We've actually got a thousand more uh, puzzles, and the ratings have been reset, so there's it's a bit more accurate now. Um, but it's great to have more puzzles because um, uh, a minimum a thousand is, is what I've been told. Okay, let's um, let's carry on. Knight d5 been played now. Clearly, the first thing I look at in this position is how to deliver mate with white. I want to deliver mate on the long diagonal, like so. Queen d4, queen g7. Problem with queen d4 is that f6 comes. So more likely is the move queen to h5. Well, queen d4, actually, the knight on a7 is hanging, so probably that's the solution. I just take this knight off. Yeah, in this particular position, were the knight not hanging, then I wouldn't have done that. But uh, that was relatively simple, uh, after all. Uh, this position here is another very standard position you could get. And uh, once again, it's all about the weak squares in your opponent's camp. And uh, here, um, yeah, uh, it seems to me that, um, yeah, I mean, the move queen f3 is the move I want to play here. I think that's the winner. I want to give checkmate on g2, and I see it via this beautiful little battery. And there's nothing that white can do. By the way, I'm not solving this, these puzzles in the quickest time I could because I want to explain the concepts to all of you. So if you see my rating just going up very slowly, there's a reason for that. Uh, here, this is very simple again. Something's happening on g6. I don't know whether knight f5 is the correct move. Rook takes g6. To be honest, it probably all wins. But rook takes g6, I think, is, is a simple... Uh, two mover, uh, queen g8 mate is coming at the end. So that was relatively simple, just looking to destroy the defenders. This one again is a very simple one, where 
immediately I've seen the, the winning move is rook to g8 mate. Um, and I've seen that I'm giving up all my material on the f on this long diagonal. Give up the queen, give up the bishop, and deliver mate. So again, just pattern recognition. Didn't actually have to calculate much. Just knew that rook g8 was the mate we were going to make. Uh, bishop a5 just been played with black. Um, again, here the concept is going to do with this rook, which is undefended. I, I need a good discovery with the knight. And it looks like knight takes b3. Oh, no, that one doesn't work, does it? Um, ah, rook d5. I'm wondering if knight takes b3 does actually still win. Actually, I think this move still wins, believe it or not, because if a takes b3, rook takes d1. Ah, but then he's got takes, takes, and queen f8. King b7, check. King b8. No, it might still... <laughs> Might still win. I think the move still wins, but rook d5 apparently is the, the quicker option, yeah, because if c takes d5, queen e2 check, and knight f5, and queen h5 is mate. So that was cute. Uh, here, this is again a very common example of, 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 a, of noticing a pattern, a mating construction. If the bishop weren't on g2, we would deliver mate with queen takes h3, so we just need to eliminate the bishop but maintain the rook and king in the same position. So clearly the move is bishop to d5. And after queen b7, now that the bishop is pinned, queen takes h3 is mate. Bishop takes d5 would have been mate anyway. So let's continue. Um, this position again is a fairly standard one where I can already see force mate. Uh, I can see knight takes f6 is double check. That's the first move you look at, king f8. And now you would love to give... Uh, bishop d6 would be mate if we could play it, but he's got queen takes d6, but then we realize rook e8 at the end is mate. So that's another nice little just pattern recognition. Uh, okay, and we'll carry on. Knight f7. Okay, uh, what black to move. Uh, pretty standard stuff once more. I can see that we are mating with the move bishop takes c1 is the final move here. First move you look at in this position is, well, how do I break through? And you can see that rook takes a2, rook sacrifice, getting rid of the defender, king takes a2, rook a8 check, king b1, c2 check, king b2 only move, bishop a3 check, king a1 only move, bishop takes c1 mate. Let's have a look, Let's see if I'm... There we go. So seems to be slightly warmed up now, which is good. Um, uh, let's see this one. So again, I've already kind of seen the idea here, and the idea is that um, we're going to use the long diagonal a1 to h8, but we can't do it at the moment because our d pawn's blocking it. So I believe the correct move will be d5. And after takes, 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 queen c3, we've got to be careful that we don't do it. There's going to be a knight f6 as well. I'm pretty sure the move is d5. Rook d5. Um, is it takes or check first? Maybe check first. Yeah. We give a check first. And ah, and of course, king f8 runs into queen h8 and it's, it's all over. So that was pretty simple. Um, this position here is, well, queen a2 is the first move I look at, hitting f2, and if queen to d4, then we need a move, which is not coming to me immediately. Uh, so... What else can we do here? F4 doesn't work because of queen takes e4 check. I mean, queen a2 just looks so right. I'm going to play it. Queen d4, yeah. Oh, and of course, just rook d3 doesn't work. But what about the move queen e2 with the threat of e3? But queen e2, rook d7, and then rook's hg3 check is never mate. Um, hmm. E3, king takes... Ah, we can go E3 immediately, because king takes F3, queen takes F2 is mate. That's the point. Okay, that was the point of the solution. All right. So, let's keep on going. 
So yeah, you look at e3 and then you saw king takes f3 and it, instinctively I thought, hold, hold on a second, I'm losing a rook. But then I just had to calculate that uh, that was winning. Um, so here we've got an example. It's white to move. Um, white is what's going on. White is pushing up the board. So we want to make a queen with a7, a8, but we can't because the rook takes, so I think we just have to distract the rook with rook c5 check and make the queen. I think that's pretty simple. Just a very simple case of distraction. All right. Uh, here, I've seen the win already. I can see that the the knight on d7 is causing a big problem for black because it's blocking out the long diagonal. And I've already seen this position is winning after, uh, we'd love to just play queen b3 check in this position. So what do we do? We just whip this off and queen b3 is actually checkmate, believe it or not. Very cute checkmate. The bishop on h6 does well f forming a part of the mating net. Um, yeah, this position here is again a pretty simple one uh, where um, the idea is that it were the queen not on d1, were the knight not on g3, you'd play queen e1 mate. So, how do you get there? Well, you can just divert the queen and then clear the knight, and queen e1 is mate. Very simple stuff. So that was a, so I hope you're starting to realize how I'm looking at these positions, recognizing the patterns. Again, very simple. Uh, the knight is pinned. I can't play knight c2 or knight d3. But were I to distract the queen from f5, then I could. So clearly the move is queen takes e5 check and knight d3, where I win the queen back with an extra piece and a winning position. So that's simple. Um, this position again is is a very easy one because it's force mate in two, just bishop g2 and bishop g3. I'm not going to go into this too much. That's just checkmate. So not really pattern recognition, but just a simple checkmate there. Um, this one is uh, again pretty simple. You use the fact that. There's a few things you use here. You notice that the rook is on f1 and that you've got a beautiful tactic that wins rook e2. The queen is pinned. So if queen takes c5, we would have played rook g, g takes e check, king h1, rook h2, king g1, and rook e g2, which is mate. Well, here we can just play queen's hg5 and it's game over. Black has got a decisive material advantage. So that was pretty simple. Um, and yeah, this one again is very simple. I can see that White has just played the move castles, but his queen is very short of squares, so we kick it away. We see bishop c2, queen e1 only move, and knight d3 is a very typical pattern to trap the queen, winning the position. Okay, so next one uh, again is not so difficult, really. It's uh, it, it's all just it's amazing. It's all just pattern recognition, um, feeling some, you know, which squares these guys should be on. Um, then again, I just looked at it and I got it wrong. So let me have another think here. We want to play knight takes h6, so I think the move is rook e7, where we threaten queen takes f7, and the problem is if he goes bishop takes e7, knight takes h6 wins, so rook e7 is the move. Knight h6, king h7, then we realize queen takes f7, king takes h6, probably, and then we have to decide if we go bishop g7 or queen g7, probably bishop g7, because if king h7, bishop f8 would force king h8 and queen g7, so king would have to come to g5 or f5, king g5, f4, check, king h5, g4, check, king h4. I think there's just mate somewhere. Let's have a look if it's this. Ah, oh, it doesn't even let me do it, but there is forced mate there. So, just very simple, looking at the forcing lines all the time here when we're doing these calculation uh, exercises. 
Okay, I can see this one already. Uh, it's a bit uh, slightly more disguised, but basically I can see that this queen is undefended along the sixth. And I can see that were we to move the pawn and were we move to move the f pawn, we'd be winning. So the move bishop e5 check must be the correct move because um, that said king a8. Ah, and if king a8, that's the point. Bishop e5 check, you have to play f takes e5, and now b takes a7, uh, king a8, and queen takes g6. Yeah. The point was that uh, if you go in this position, uh, if it lets me, which it's not. Well, after bishop e5 check at the start, yeah, bishop e5 check, if king a8, quite simply, queen takes a7, rook takes a7, rook takes a7, is a cute mate. That's why I didn't want. This one again is relatively um, simple in in many ways because the move knight b5 check just seems to win immediately. Oh no, it doesn't win. Why doesn't that win? Oh, I think it's the same thing. I don't understand why knight b5 check wouldn't win there. It's the same thing. That's wrong with the uh, tactics trainer. Same idea. Um, In this position, very simple again, I can see that were I able to play knight e2 check, I'd win a queen. I see the bishops there, but then I also see that we could play the cute little queen takes f3 and knight e2 and emerge a piece up. So that was relatively easy. Um, next problem is, again, a very easy one where the first instinct for me is I want to play the move c3. I'm not here to exchange queens. I want to play c3 followed by queen takes b2 mate. I see that he can play queen takes c3 check, queen takes c3, b takes c3. Ah, that doesn't quite work. And then I wanted to go bishop takes a2 check doesn't work. Ah, but we can take on d2 first and then c3. So you work out c3, you realize that queen takes c3 check is okay, then you see that queen takes d2, and now the rook is undefended on d2, followed by c3. Oh, what's going on? Ah, oh. I think my move still wins. Um, because after takes, takes c3, Ah, uh, but then he can just go rook d4. Right, no, that was a mistake. Bishop e4 was the cute little idea. Yeah, I should have seen that as well. Because if queen takes queen, rook takes d1 is mate. That That's annoying. Uh, this position here, I can see that the black king is very precariously placed. Also, queen d6 check seems to win a rook immediately, so I'm just going to play it. Maybe it's the right move, and it is. So that was relatively easy. Um, hope you're enjoying this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do about another 10 15 minutes or so because otherwise I'm going to go a bit mad. This one again, I can see very quickly because I can see that, believe it or not, knight g8 is checkmate. Where I'd take on f6 and play knight g8, it's mate. So I can see that knight takes f6, he would play queen takes queen, and then I've got knight g8, which is mate. Um, so Nice two bishops uh, with the pawn, the king was trapped, and I noticed that, which is why I solved the pattern, the problem. Um, rook e8, yeah, this is, um, this is a, a very easy problem as well, where I can give a check and then take on e8 with check, and then win. So just queen g4 is very simple, and f takes g4. All right. Um, another one here, b takes a3. All right, uh, I want to give mate on h7. And I see that bishop f5 is met by bishop takes f5 and I don't have anything. So we need also, uh, you know, it might be the case that the move bishop d7 is the correct move here. Attacking the queen, whichever way he takes, I play rook takes h7, king takes h7, queen h5. So I think that's the move. Yeah. 
Very cute. And that, the pattern I saw is that king takes h7, queen h5. That is amazing construction. All of these amazing constructions that I've seen previously. So that's why I'm able to um, solve these problems. Um, yeah, I can see this as well. Uh, knight e6, I want to play rook takes e6, followed by bishop f4 check. Bishop f4 check is the move I want to play. Knight's blocking it, rook takes e6. Oh, I have to, and any queen down the back, I've got rook e8. So this is just winning, and I win the queen. King back to h1 would have been met by queen c1 with mate. So... Uh, yeah, I'm wondering what black does after bishop e3, bishop c5, b4. Just a very standard kind of French trap here. And uh, white emerges a piece up. Winning. So yeah, it's good to do these puzzles, these uh, problems. Uh, they get you sharp. You saw at the beginning I was a bit slow, but once you get through a few of them, you start to feel sharp. And I know a number of very strong grandmasters who who actually do this before their games, um, just to just to get a bit sharp. Now this one's slightly tricky because White's threatening mate on the back rank with rook a8. Um, so the question is, could I take on b2? Probably it's too simple as well for the problem. So the question is, what is the move? I think the move is something like some... Uh, hmm. What do I want to do here? Some move like queen c6? Because if bishop takes c6, rook takes b2. I think that's the move. I think this is the cute little idea. No. It's not. What was it? Oh, I take on f2 check. My goodness, I missed that completely. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm starting to feel a bit feeling it now. Well, this one is looks like it's simple. G4 knight takes g4 queen h7. That's that's all she wrote. Oh, it's check. I have to take right. I really am feeling it. And how do I mate him? Because he's threatened. I have to give a check, I think. I think I have to give a check. Here. Yeah, king f3. Queen d5 or queen b3. Queen d5 looks correct. King f2, knight g4, and uh, king e2, rook e4. Was winning. Um, okay, so all is going well so far. This one is I think I've got it. Yeah. So the idea is that um, I'd love to. I need to win the queen. So the first move I see is check. Then I see another check. And then I see I'd love to play rook f2, but bishop's there, so you can play rook takes h2, and now rook f2, winning the, winning the whole house. Um, this one I can immediately see that I want to put my bishop on the long diagonal. Bishop c6, rook f2 may very well be the right way, but then knight g4 wins, so this is quite simple. Ah, I'm pretty sure this move wins anyway, but let's see what it was. Ah, of course you can take on g2 as well. Yeah, of course, that was uh, very strong as well. Followed by bishop c6 and winning the queen or checkmating. Here is very similar, similar motif to before, where the rook has to come back. We'll try and play a few more of these a bit quicker so we can get some points. Maybe do another another few before. This one's relatively easy as well, I believe, because we want to... The queen is attacking... I can immediately see e6 is involved in this problem. 
Bishop takes e6, and if bishop d4, f6 is okay. So bishop h6, bishop comes back to g4. So that doesn't work, but I'm sure e6 is the move. And now the question is, what? Is it rook a d1 first, attacking the queen, or is it bishop h6? But that's bishop d4, f6. Is no good. Is it attacking the queen first? No. So you're flicking that in was bird. It was bishop. Ah, queen g4. That's the move I missed. Ah, that's very cute. Bishop d4, f6, queen g4. With a double pin. One against the queen, one against the king. Very good. Okay. This one here looks relatively simple. Rook takes c3. Knight takes c3, bishop takes c3, b3, no, that doesn't work. Uh, so the other question is, rook takes e4, doesn't work. So what works here? Takes, 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 b3. Mm. Takes on c4, takes, takes. That doesn't look like forced mate, where is it? Um, no, it wasn't rook takes c3. I wonder what it was. Ah, rook takes c4. Ah, and queen. Of course. I saw, actually, in this position, I saw takes, takes, and b3, and I wanted to go queen f2, but the queen was there. So really, if you take on e4 first, takes, now take here, and b3, suddenly I've got the square for my queen. I should have seen that one. That one was bad. Oh goodness, um, this is more of a puzzle. I can see that I want to mate with the knights, and if I go king d4, queen, knight d5 is mate, king d4, knight c2, knight takes c2 is mate, so I think this just wins. And now here. So that's very cute, that's, that's a puzzle, you'll never get that in your real games, but you know, it's good fun. Good fun anyway. Um, this one is a famous example. I want to play queen f6 check, can't because the knight's there. So how do we distract the knight to e7? And now check and mate. Pretty simple stuff. Um, 59 puzzles solved. 50, it says 50 out of 59. There are a few in there that were still winning. They, they just weren't the most clinical, so I'm not quite sure. I can immediately see here that the right move is to play knight d takes e6, because if knight takes rook, I take the rook with check, and I win a pawn. And if he takes my knight, then I win the rook. So that has to be the right move. And then just this with a much more uh, pleasant ending pawn up. All right, so this one here, immediately what I see is I want to give mate on the h file. How do I get my rook there? Clearly the only way is via d3. Rook d3, you see the rook protects the bishop. Rook h3 is possible because of the pin on the pawn, and that's mate. Alright, just a few more and then we'll go. Again, very simple tactic. I see the queen and king is lined up, so what do I want to do? I want to play bishop takes d4. How do we do that? Sacrifice rook. Bishop takes d4 with massive material advantage winning. And last three, let's say, for today's little session. Um, this one here, again, pretty simple, um, all about deflection. Um, the move rook takes b2, I know wins, because if rook takes b2, queen f1 leads to forced mate. And if queen takes b2, I play the move queen to d3, and queen takes h3 is end of game. Uh, unless bishop takes, yeah, I think this is the correct move, yeah. Check. 
two more and put a few points on my few of, of these exercises I've got wrong although my, just some of them were move orders and the one was I, I just didn't see it but these are very good immediately here I know the answer I can I can I want to play takes queen give up my queen give a check king e7 knight d5 mate I've already seen that mate is on d5 so that's pretty simple and we'll we'll do the last one for today and let's see what the last one is um yeah this is very easy as well I can immediately see that rook to, rook g6 wins the house because if f takes queen takes king f8 queen h6 check is mate so you just do this um, knight g7 queen h8 king f7 oh, maybe we can just um, our queen h6 knight g7 bishop g6 oh no I think that still wins, but I played... Oh, bishop e6 there. Threatening queen f7. Anyway, I think it's clear I've completely gone. Um, feeling a bit worse for wears today. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Remember to check out the rest of the live events that we have here on Chess24. And um, remember to use the tactics training yourself. It really is a very good tool just to sharpen up your tactics. After all, chess is 99% tactics. I do believe in that stat. Um, and the sharper you get and the more patterns you manage to store in your memory, the better you will do in your own game. So good luck with those. Check out what else we have here on Chess24. Look forward to seeing you all very soon. Let's go for Schellingford. Now Schellingford I've had a few battles with over these Blitz sessions and I'm determined to at least win one. This is Lucas Winterberg. And he is a uh, Fide Master from Germany. And I'm going to play a Benko again, because it's Benko Day, ladies and gentlemen. It is Benko Day, Day of the Benko. And he's played B6 as well. We'll go A5. We'll do the same line. This time he'll probably go E4, though. He might go G3, I don't know. He might go D6. Well, he's gone G3. This is interesting. So I've got the same game as I did before, and notice how my opponent, my previous opponent, made it a real hash of things. I quite like this when they play with the Fianchetto against my eight, and he's doing the same thing. This is unbelievable, Jeff. This is unbelievable. Do they not learn? Do they not learn? Shelling, I'm telling you, son, I've got your number this game. I've got your number. I feel it. I feel it in the bones. You know, sometimes you just feel it in your in your in your blood, in your bones.